Hello? Finally Friday, yeah? I'm not good yet. So the whole week I have some kind of flu, high temperature and you know my trough was, was killing me. Anyway, we are back. And we have a laptop, we have a job. This laptop was booked in with no power, yeah? It's a HP. Uh, HP 15-BA078SA Now the problem with this one Let's plug the charger It doesn't have the battery So the laptop came without the battery Plug the charger and we have no light Nothing, yeah? Pressing the power button Nothing will happen, no light there and no light here where is the power on uh, LED. Yeah? So this is just that. Now let's open this one and try to figure it out what is the problem. No, here are, are around like 8 degrees in the daytime and like 3 4 on the night time. And uh, I did start the heat at home, but here it's kind of cold because it's a shopping center and the shopping center is not heated. Okay, hopefully now it's better. So let's try to fix this. So, most likely, we have a motherboard issue. Most likely. Hopefully it will be an interesting fault so we can learn. I know here are two more screws. Here. Yeah. When I spoke with someone on one of the admins from the Discord a few days ago and he said here in Australia it's like 40, 39 degrees and it's too hot for me. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, I'm working on the wrong country. Okay, let's open this. So what is supposed to come out, the back or the front? I think the front. No, the back. Okay, the back is coming out. We are fine. A lot of broken plastic things from somewhere. We have a classic motherboard with a processor solder on the on the board. Nothing special. Let's check again in the charger. What do we check first? First, obviously, we are checking if we have 19 volts on the board. So we have the multimeter on screen. We have ground from any screw. Plus, and we have 19.6. You can see on the... Why my screen goes off. Okay, it's working now. So the charging port is good. 
Because first you'll think maybe it's a charging port issue. But not on this case. 19.6. The next one, next step. You check if your 90 volts power rail is present on the motherboard. So we can check on any power supply, like here, yeah, you know the PAT, the PAT is like MOSFET coil capacitor. On this case, we have like a, like here, we have a all-in-one chip, so the MOSFETs are inside of this. We have the coil, probably this is the input capacitor, here coil, I can't see any switching device. Well, look here. Here is more clear. You have a coil, two coils, four MOSFETs, and these are the input capacitors. The input, meaning 19 volts being there. Yeah? So, checking here. So, it's no voltage. Nothing. It's zero. So our 90 volts power rail is missing. Okay, I was thinking it's something more interesting, but anyway, you have uh, you can find this fault on two ways. Let's stay away from the power supply on this moment. Let's switch on diode mode and checking the capacitor and it's zero 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 point zero zero six. If you want to check on ohms, but it's same thing. So I prefer using the diode mode checking the five point two ohms. It's not it's not quite normal to be five ohms because if you if you try to calculate the current, it will be will be higher. So uh, one second.
I'm really sorry. You know, uh, sometimes the customer want more, more details about the jobs. But anyway, what I was saying. about this motherboard yeah so what do we have there we have 5 ohms on the 19 volts uh, the 19 volts power L which is too low 5 ohms it will take a lot of amps it will be to calculate <coughs> Uh, e equals uh, volt divided by resistance. Let me see. So we have e I I sorry I. Nineteen divided by. Uh, 5 ohms 3.8 amps which is a lot yeah so 3.8 amps it's a lot that's not normal okay good I want to show you something on discord give me one second Uh, or maybe later, yeah. Let's let's get concentrated on this one. So if I check here, com compare with ground, yeah. Compare with ground. It's five one. It's not. Yes, yeah, 5 ohms, yeah? 5? Or 0 0.5? 5.2 If I check with the ground, must be same thing Because obviously the capacitor The capacitor connected to ground, yeah? So we have same, 5 ohms If I check on... Uh, I said this capacitor from this power supply the 90 volts power L should be present so checking again on this capacitor let's see if I if I was right here is ground and here 5.4 ohms yeah so you see that's my 90, 90 volts power L which is missing it's not even point to check the 3.3 .3, which is no probably this is the RAM one RAM power supply processor we have a small power supply here which I don't know what is doing this is the charging this is another power supply it's a small coil this can be the 3.3 volts power supply or maybe not but it's no point move your attention from actually the problem of this board which is missing the main power rail yeah it's like on your home it's your main power rail yeah your mains and you plug everything there same in the laptop it's, it's no difference now it's very hard with the multimeter so somehow you have a partial short there 5 ohms is not very low low if you have like 0 0.1 ohms that's low 5 ohms is not very low but still you can't really find the fault with the multimeter especially a fault like this so the only way to find the fault with the multimeter is starting and removing things removing like removing the capacitor, removing the MOSFETs, removing a lot, a lot of things which are connected 
on a direct load with your 90 volts power rail yeah so it's quite hard that's why i'm always using the power supply because it's more easy okay so it's not i will not even go on the start from the charging port you have two mosfets yeah which one is to protect against inverse voltage and one is to protect against high current like on this case so that's the reason why we have here 19 and here we have nothing so i will check exactly why we don't have uh, why we have a short there it's not a short so i will go with low currents it's a partial short it's something it's 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 has low resistance so let's see we have our power supply and i will go let's say one amp we can go with one amp yeah we can the voltage 19 volts ground i can use any screw and connect the wire to ground and plus and i will come with the power supply exactly on these capacitors yeah exactly there so I don't even want to check which is the ground because obviously if you short ground to ground this ground you can see on the power supply the current is limited yeah it's one amp but the voltage is 0 0.01 that's mean a very 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 low resistance so I know that's the ground okay so I'll come on the capacitors and obviously one, one side of the capacitor check the voltage just forget about the current the current is fixed it's one amp the voltage is 0 0.01 so i know for sure my ground is on this side on the other side here this here must be plus it must be 19 volts so on this moment we have 1.8 volts obviously the current is limited to one amp so here is supposed to be no current because the laptop is off when it's on yeah the laptop is taking probably around one amp 1.2 amps but now the laptop is off. I still, you know, it's taking one amp. But something probably is getting mad, mad hot. I know I've done so many videos with this fault, but this this is the most common fault on the laptops. Yeah. So I wish in this moment to have like a thermal camera, but we don't have. Because it's a high resistance, can be a faulty MOSFET can be a dead capacitor can be a lot of things but something is getting mad hot yeah give me one second give me one second Okay. Probably today. Yeah. By three o'clock, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I wish to not be here, you know. You know that flu? Which is... I can't breathe, I can't do anything. Okay, let's go up. Let's go to arms, yeah? Now it's two arms. You know, these arms are not going like nowhere, you know? They are going somewhere. 
and obviously the current get changed on heat. Yeah, that's that's how the things works. Can be on the other side of the board. You know that feeling when you okay I think I'm stupid. You know that feeling? Let's take out the RAM memory. Oh no, I'm not stupid. I was thinking that the, the RAM power supply is shorted and actually my circuit gets close through the RAM, you know, the power supply and why well, it's not, it's something else. Okay, that's bad, the processor is getting warm. That's bad. Give me one second. That's proper bad. So actually the resistance is it's a MOSFET. Okay, give me one second, one second. Okay, okay, that's bad because uh, people start calling. You know, it's it's it's. The thing is, the people think I can help them, like on the comments. I have this laptop; it's not coming on. What do you think is the problem? And it, it, it doesn't work like that. No, your laptop must be here, must be open, and I have to check 
just to figure it out, to have an idea about the problem. And, you know, I don't remember what I was doing. Okay, the processor was getting hot. That's bad, because the processor can get hot on only one way. Well, actually, the plus, you have one MOSFET is connected to plus, one to minus, plus, minus, yeah? One MOSFET is connected to plus, the MOSFET is shorted, it's open, it's going through the coil, goes up from the coil, it's going to the processor, and it's going to ground. And what is supporting this theory, it's actually the resistance on the processor is 5 ohms, yeah? So if we check the processor, because this capacitor are on the processor, if I check on the, the resistance of, of, of on the on the, on this capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor, so the resistance on this one is 49 ohms. Okay, maybe I'm checking on the wrong one. Yes, it was the wrong one. It's not 36 ohms. Now must be five ohms to support the theory. Or is something wrong with my multimeter? I don't know. 240 ohms, really? It's hard to believe. Let me check with the other multimeter. It's quite crazy. It is. This is high resistance. And here is 49 ohms. Okay, that's not good. Checking straight on the coil because that's right. 36 ohms. And on this one, 300 ohms. So how my processor can get hot, can get warm? How? One more time. Because that's the thing, if processor heats in getting warm, but the MOSFETs are cold. So clearly, I don't know. can be a MOSFET, if it's, if it's perfectly shorted, like very low resistance, it will not get hot. What it will get hot will be the coil, which is on serial mode. You see, this is a tricky fault. Yeah, the processor is getting warm. Let's take the multimeter. Ground. Volts. No, this is not switching, this is not switching, it's... So we don't have power from this power supply. You see, that's a tricky fault. So my power is not going from here on the processor, but the processor is still getting warm. For some reason. So it's not a V core. So what can be? You 
can't say it's a shorted processor. You can't say that the laptop is off. Yeah. But it gives the moment to take out the board. But this is a tricky one. This is not a usual uh, shorter capacitor. Nah, not this one. Not this one. I'm just thinking what can be. But at this moment I have no clue, no idea about what can be here. Like, no idea. Well, on this one, the PCH is inside of the processor. So, yeah. Have the IO chip. Here is nothing like. Here we have two power supplies, so most likely here is the 3.3 .3 and 5 volts power supply. But how my processor is getting warm? How? We don't need the laptop. How this can happen? Because obviously it must be a logical explanation. Same story. No idea what we can check. We can check a few things. The processor is fine, it has the heat sink on it. Yeah, this coil is getting hot. This one. And that's bad. Because I don't have that chip. You remember I told you? We have an all-in-one switching power supply. That means everything is inside. Everything is inside of this chip. Which if I'm looking closely... Huh? Looks fine. Well, let's see. What is supporting the theory is if we are removing the chip, we should be fine. The board should take no power. Or we can remove the coil. <sighs> or... Okay, these are different. 
these are different. Okay, let's remove the chip quickly. Let's use some flux. Well, let's see, if we are removing the chip, the shore should be gone, yeah? So the chip is removed. Uh, the chip position. The chip position. Oh, it's marked on the board anyway. Okay. So now if we are checking with the power supply on the same point that's me here so it's taking no power you can see no power but that's the issue so in this case that's the problem you can see it's taking so on this side here is ground although the capacitor on the other side is plus 19 and it's fine if we are checking with the uh, multimeter diode mode if we are checking on the capacitor now it's not short anymore you see it's not short so that's the issue that chip is the problem actually you understand inside of that chip we have like a driver we have two MOSFETs and one of the MOSFET just one one which is connected to plus is shorted 100% you know it's not supposed to switch or to, to be like any MOSFET to be on when actually the laptop is off that's kind of bad so we need this board I have few new boards here maybe we can find something maybe we are lucky maybe not no, we have a chip here but it's different it's a different one Let's see, maybe we can find the chip. If not, we'll have to order the chip. Of course, we cannot replace with any chip. We need exactly, exactly the same chip. Because all chips are different. Wow, and the things go smaller and smaller. <sighs> what about if we cannot find the chip? Uh, we have to order the chip then. Because there's really no other way.
was the moment when you realize actually the fault is not that simple because you don't have the part if you don't have the part you can't fix it Well, I suppose I have to order the ship. Let me try it, but maybe I will find it. The problem is, I know I don't have that board. Or maybe... We can find a ship on a similar one. Oh, we need a new one, a new board. Like new style, new type. Okay, let's see online what the ship is doing, yeah? I just put the chip so I can clean it and check one more time. QB or six zero eight ship I see nah it's not this one Q. no nah you can't find anything about the ship Nothing. It's 
So there's nothing on Google. Wow. Let me check something. Multimeter. So this track is going here, here, here. We have this MOSFET and it's going straight to the processor. So there should be 3.3. Let me take out the chip. Now let's try a trick, but I'm sure it'll not work. But let's try it. Well, the chip is out. But there is no short. Let's check with the multimeter. Okay, let's put the board back. The board should come on. But probably it will do some crazy thing like it's shutting down or it's not displaying or. But the board should come on. We should have like power on light. On this moment. So just based on reading on that chip, I can't even find it on Google, on the Google, you know, so obviously I cannot buy it. If you cannot buy it, you cannot fix it. On the best case, you have another board, yeah. You just take the chip from the other board. So because this is a new laptop, a new, meaning like probably like two three years old uh, we don't have the board that's why always it's a good idea to buy broken laptops so you can have spares charger Charger is plugged in, and we do have the light on the charger. The LED is on. Let's try and power on the laptop. Obviously, it will not work, so don't expect that. But no, no, okay, no, it's not. It's not coming on because the chip is reporting if the power supply is fine. Yeah, it will not work. Ah, sorry. Let me connect the uh, power button. I forgot to connect the power button. You have the power good signal.
power on and it's coming on you can see the LED here but obviously it will not start and it's going off now it's off you see because many ask uh, you know why my laptop is coming on goes off that this can be a reason Now my question is, what kind of voltage is supposed to be there? We can fool the laptop? Probably not. But we're trying. Power supply. I'm not sure if it's 3.3 there. Probably not. Then it's taking too much current. I will say 1.8. Well, can be 1.8. Can be. Power on. And it's taking a lot of amps. Two amps. But it's so stupid, it's not going off anymore. Okay, so I suppose it's not supposed to... Uh, I think it's not supposed to be 1.7 there. What processor is this? <sighs> so what, what's the processor? It's not saying. How can I know what processor is here? How can I know what voltage is supposed to be here? If I don't have schematic, 1.3 can be. So probably it will not start because as uh, the chip has that signal now, is reporting if the voltage is right to the super IO, and after that the super IO will start the the startup sequence. I cannot be so stupid. Let's reset the bias. I seen something, I seen... Yeah, the screen has backlight. That's insane. Okay, so the voltage is not right. So what voltage is supposed to be here? Huh? That's insane. We have like one volt. So actually you can overclock your processor with this power L. It's taking 770 milliamps. But how the... How the I don't get it. The Super I will not start the... It will not start the... It will not read the BIOS before 
the initial startup uh, will be fine. So he the, the the super IO it's waiting the signal from each power supply to say you know what I'm on I have the right voltage and everything is okay. That's crazy. Actually, it's great because we can uh, let's modify it. Let's fix this. That's insane. Ah, can't believe. So we can adapt uh, and modify um, and add a power supply. We have this universal one, which is, I don't know, some Chinese thing. It's like two pounds on eBay or less. 700 milliamps, I'm sure, can be covered by this power supply. But I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it. <laughs> That's crazy. So we have ground here. Actually, I can overclock it. No, I can't. Okay. That's me to rise the clock. And we can't rise the clock. We can rise the, the voltage. But not the clock. Okay. I don't really know what this power supply, power rail is doing. But I think it's the PCH one. The chipset. Because the chipset is inside of the processor. So this is all in one, you know, the processor, the chipset. That's crazy. It is crazy. Okay, let's find the ground here, yeah? Let's find the ground. Yeah. That's ground, that's no ground. That's not ground. I need a big ground truck. What about here? This is a big ground truck. There or here? I think here is better. Yeah. Let me start the solar iron. You know, this kind of switching power supplies from eBay, you can adjust the voltage. So I think this is like, like up to up like 1 amp, 2 amps. Remember, I we used one on that uh, audio. Uh, audio. I don't know, we used one on some video, I don't remember. So we can fit this module, we can adjust the voltage, the output voltage, from this. And we are fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is insane. It's not supposed to work, it's not supposed to the laptop to come on. Well, who knows, the, the things are going so... Uh, Simples on these days, like everything gets simplified. Maybe now the super IO doesn't wait for the for the power supply. That's fine, and here we have ground where... Yeah. So here... But 
be honest, what you can do? This ship is not even on Google, you know. It's, it's, you think I will find the ship on another... Uh, I search on Google and there's nothing there. So the board is solid, it's soldered to ground. So all what we need... We need one wire to plus. If we can find a wire. A tiny wire. Well, not so tiny. Because still we have like one arm there. Uh, now it's a problem. I don't think I can uh, adjust this power supply lower than one of volt. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, let's use a red wire for a uh, plus, so we need a wire from here to here, good. Well, this will be a nice video, so actually you can try replacing the power supplies if I'm not working. Obviously, check first with the power supply if it's working. And always use a current limit. Because, you know, like on this case, I didn't know the voltage, so I use a current limit. So the current will not go up and burn my processor. So this is my 19 volts, which is going to that capacitor from this chip here. Let's see if it's not ground. Maybe I connect the wire to ground. It is ground. Hmm. Yeah, has to be connected on the other side. You know, I said, you know what, let's try it. But I was, you know, I was, I was so sure it will not work. So we have to solder this wire here. And we are fine. Now we can connect the charger, yeah? Plug the charger. Charger is plugged. Let's check the voltage. So this power supply has on the input 19.7 you can see. And on the output we have nothing. Or here. What? Okay, let's adjust the power supply. But it should work. It should work with 19, yeah? I think so. I think. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. So that's the output. Let's try and adjust it. I 
Oh yeah, it is working. Five volts, yeah. I can't push that thingy. I can't push it. Hmm. Now we have nine volts. Okay, that's good. And now we have, we have nothing. One point eight, too much. One point two. One point, I think it should be one point two, yeah, or not. Let's go lower, one volt, or one volt, can be. Now we need one more wire. Wait, wait, it's not right, it's not right. It's not right because the power has to come on only when you press the power button. You can't keep the, the pressure all the, always over uh, under the voltage. Ah, that was a bad idea. That was a very bad idea. Or maybe no. Maybe can, we can connect the input of this one, not from 19 volts, from 5 volts. When the laptop is starting. What do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, it's, it's not a live stream, so I can ask, uh, I can ask the others. What should I do? Let's see if, where is the 5 volts power supply. Let's let's desolder. Uh, no. Let me power on the laptop and check the 5 volts. So the 5 volts power L seems to be here plus. So I'll power up the laptop. The laptop is on and we have 5 volts, which is fantastic. Great. Let's unplug the laptop. Let's get this wire from here. And move the wire to the 5 volts. Hopefully this switching power supply will work with 5 volts. Let's see now. So now if you are plugging the charger. Yeah, the charger is plugged. Pressing the power button. It's on. Uh, and the output is... 1 volt. Fantastic. Unplug the... Let's unplug the charger. Let's solder the output. Uh. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's use this. This bridge it will give us some uh, uh, 
the switching board will be more stable here, like mechanical speaking. Let's solder this there. I'll try to show you after that on the other of those chillers, uh, the microscope. Sorry. Okay, we need a little bit of heat here. Perfect. Let's see what we did. Now it should work straight out, yeah? Charger is plugged. Power on. Backlight. And nothing. Oh, why? Let's check the voltage. One point one. Why is it not working? What I did wrong? It should work. Logical speaking, yeah, on the paper should work. Probably because the voltage is not the right voltage. I'll try to lower the voltage a bit. But how can I do it? Hmm? Because you can't really play <laughs> with the uh, with the voltage when it's you know everything here is soldered on place. One point one. One volt. Let's see. One volt is working. It's working. One volt is working. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So our modification is fantastic. Yeah, it's cold. That's great. That's 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 fantastic. Now let's see if it's working. If it's not freezing and things like that. Let's power off. On again, just to pass over that scanning thing. It's loading the windows. Funny spinning, which is fine. The processor is a little, little bit warm. Let's wait. This is slow, obviously. It's a slow processor. But anyway, that's an example how you can modify the manufacturer design. And I know many people think the manufacturer is some kind of god, which is not true. Remember the Lenovo laptop? Yeah. Yeah, give me one second.
Okay, so the laptop is on. Uh, let's make it bright. Yeah. Oh, she's working. Everything is fine. Let's see if we have any password there or some customer email. Yeah, we have a customer email. Uh, yes. I can't show you. I'll shut down now the the laptop. I'll start one more time. When the laptop is off right now, yeah. When the laptop is off, should be no voltage there. Wait, it's still you know on the Windows stand the screen goes off, but actually the laptop is still working. You can see here the hard drive is still working. Because the wind, the computer, uh, it starts the shut, the start shutdown sequence, and it will not end just because the screen goes black. You have to wait for the laptop to goes off. So now the laptop is off. We have the multimeter on screen. Yeah. So on the output right now we have nothing. On the input, obviously we have nothing. I'll power on the laptop. With the laptop on, on the input of this switching power supply, we have 5 volts, you can see there. And on the output, right now, we have 1 volt. Okay? So everything is fine. Hopefully. Okay? Obviously, the the um, the power supply can be like fine tuning, yeah. If has any issues, but the only issue that I'm scared is like to be the voltage is too low and the and the laptop start freezing. So that happens when the voltage is too low. But I know it's not low because if I rise the voltage, the voltage like how was last like. Five minutes ago, like 1.1 volts, the laptop will not start. That means I am on the top already. So I just lower the voltage a little bit and the laptop start start working. So uh, I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not really scared of freezing. Now the other question what we can have is how do we know the five volts uh, power supply it will support the extra current which is nearly one amp. I remember 700 and something milliamps. Well, you know, when you build up a power supply, but obviously the manufacturer is crazy. But if I, w I would build a power supply for anything, yeah, this power supply, how much current I need? I need one amp. Okay, I'll build up power supply two amps. Just to be sure, it's running colder, yeah? So I suppose that 5 volts power supply uh, is built on idea it's a 5 volts anyway, so when you design a 5 volts power supply, I will design so each port, if I connect a phone on each port, and I have 3 ports, so I, the laptop should be able to, uh, to supply like 1.5 amps. So already I know that power supply, it will drive me my 700 milliamps. Maybe if the customer will connect a phone on each USB port, Maybe the power supply will protect itself. It will cut the, the way. I don't think so because it's more. So it, when you design a power supply, I designed a five volts power supply. So the the, the that power supply should be a, must be able to supply power to the hard drive, to the USB ports, to the DVD ROM, and maybe something more. Yeah, that's how you design a power supply. So in that case, when everything will be on, like the DVD is working, you have a phone connected on each USB port, maybe on that point the power supply, you know, it will reach the 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 thingy, you know, yeah? So I'm sure my modification will be fine. I'm sure about that. Maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe if I'll cover with hot glue, it will be even better. Because it's not getting, not even warm. It's cold. Okay, so everything is fine. 
it's working great. I didn't think even it would work. But like how I said many times, you have a problem, just carry on, you know, just just keep going, try to find solutions. For this case, is no solution. That chip, it's 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 saying nothing. It's it's nothing to find out. So probably, let's say, if I will not fix this like that, the second option will be to buy a board, a faulty board from eBay, if I can find one. But yeah. The heatsink is cold, it's not even warm, so I'm sure the voltage is fine. Okay. I think I'll stop this video. That's what I did, you know, the power supply connected on the output of the coil. And to this power rail, which is the 5 volts one. It's a big power rail. How do I know it's the 5 volts one? Because I can see it's coming from the USB port. Is this chip which is cutting down the USB if you short the USB and it's coming here to this capacitor? It's a big, big truck, so that that's how I did know about that. Is the my five five volts one? Okay, well, thank you for watching. I'm not good yet, so maybe next week it will be some video on the end of the week and uh, don't forget like and subscribe if you like the video. Hopefully, you know, the things are more clear now. It's best to try you now with the power supply with a current limit. When you use a current limit, you can't really burn things. Depends on the limit. In my case, I knew the part of the processor is connected to this power rail because I feel it warm. So I knew it's here. I knew it has a heat sink. That's very important. Yeah, I knew it has a heat sink. And I knew I have a current limit. So let's say if I even uh, hold the power, you remember we check with we check with 19 volts. It was like five volts. Yeah, on the beginning. So even if I supply more power, I feel on the heat sink. You know, if it's that's 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 how I identify the fault. You remember? On the beginning, we have 5 volts, and we come with 19 volts here, and the processor is getting warm, yeah, and I said, you know what, something is supplying power to this. But not this, because this was colder, and was not, I checked here, was not 5 volts. And the only thing that was, was getting warm was this coil. Yeah, okay, you know. Yeah. So, see you next week. Yeah, this is another happy customer. Hopefully it will work and hopefully he will not see the video. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Bye.